Hi, this is Antonio Edward with a um, new podcast called MobiCast. It's at MobiCast.Mobi. You can um, access it on your computer and you can also access it on your mobile phone. Just go to MobiCast.Mobi or scan one of the barcodes on the website from a computer to your phone. Um, but I um, just want to start out saying that I, um, I am a big fan of mobile technology and uh, mobile, mobile phones I think is going to be the next internet. Basically, imagine how the internet was back in 1995. A lot of people went on and got desktop computers, set them up in their houses, got some type of dial-up or if it was available in their area, DSL cable, and um, they had internet. And ever since then, uh, specifically for the people who were on AOL before and other subscription uh, online uh, service, you know, the internet opened the world um, basically the United States to a, a wonderful world of, of information. Um, text based uh, and then eventually videos, audio, and uh, now you can do gaming and a bunch of other stuff now. And the internet usage uh, just exploded. It uh, linked a lot of companies together. Uh, people can work at home and they have some type of uh, virtual private network, VPN, to tie into their local, to their local networks to work from home. It allows people to communicate, video chat, and stuff like that. Well, in the year 2000, laptops have been out for a very long time. Um, but laptops has uh, brought the world to a more mobile stage. Now we got Wi-Fi, so we can move about our house. Or if you go to a coffee shop and access the internet in any room, anytime you want to. So imagine that 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 is what it was in 1995, and laptop is was 2005. Especially since laptops are just as expensive as a standard computer. Uh, you can get a desktop computer and laptop for like $400, or probably even less, depending on what you need for your laptop. So um, just think about that. And now, in 2010, um, as soon as the iPhone came out with the 3G version of the iPhone. And now we got the Android, we got Windows Mobile, we have Blackberries. You can access all the same information right on your mobile phone. Uh, the more up-to-date phones are capable of browsing the standard websites. It shows up on your screen real small, you zoom into it, and you can read the text on the screen. And, um, and that's what iPhone users have been doing for a very long time. Now we got the Android and, and a bunch of other phones that are capable of doing the same thing. So right now we're looking at a mobile age. And uh, whereas yesterday was the internet age, the information age, the technology age, then we have before that the industrial age, now we got the mobile age. And uh, what we're going through now is you can access all your information. You can do what you can do on your computer at home is what you can also do on your mobile phone. Um, iPhone is probably the most popular one right now. Uh, it's not the most sold phone in the uh, US as far as smartphones are concerned. When it comes to smartphones, the Blackberry has I iPhone beat. Uh, simply because there are a lot of companies uh, provide their employees with phones, smartphones, so they can access their emails, browse the local internet on their phone. And that's mostly on Blackberries. So that's they corner the market as far as smartphones are concerned. But iPhone comes in second. iPhone comes in second for all the fun phones. When you think of an iPhone, you think of it as a fun phone. But don't be, don't let that um, get you right there. Keep in mind that iPhone is also and could be used as a business phone as well. A lot of people don't see it that way. You know, there are some people that I know that are like, ah. Uh, iPhone. It's just a fun phone. It's a phone where you play games. It's a phone where you have a lot of doodads and this and that and the other and you can punch around and you know play games. But keep in mind that there are a lot of business applications that are available for um, for iPhones. Um, iPhone is capable of, of connecting to a corporate exchange account. And that right there in itself can sync up your calendar, your contacts, your notes and your emails uh, to your company's uh, email service. And, uh, and of course you can 
putting your own email account. So if you have Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, or even your own email service, you can plug that in too. So um, in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about a lot of applications that can be used for mobile phones, specifically for 2D barcodes, I think is um, going to be the next big thing. It's already really big in Japan in the form of um, QR code. Uh, Microsoft Tag is becoming really big here in the United States. Still not really well known yet, uh, but it's, it's becoming a part of the mainstream and featuring a lot of magazines, uh, pre-articles, and uh, print ads. I, I think even Domino's Pizza has a, a small Microsoft Tag in the upper right hand corner when you receive that junk mail uh, in your weekly junk mail. So. We got QR codes. We got Easy Code, which is um, produced by a company called ScanLife. We have uh, uh, Microsoft Tag, of course. We have Data Matrix, and we also have B Tag, which is slightly unknown, but it's uh, you do see it every once in a while out there um, being used on a lot of different advertising uh, pamphlets. Um, now, I like to go back a little bit about talking about barcodes. And let's go back to the early 1950s when barcode was first invented. In 1948, Bernard Silver uh, overheard some um, a president of a local food chain at Food Fair and asking one of the deans to research the system to automatically read product information during checkout. Now, I'm reading this straight from the Wikipedia page <laughs> under barcode. But um, kind of keep it short here. When um, when Bernard Silver created the first barcode and he got it patented in 1952, uh, it was widely used with a lot of electrical systems to read codes on motor vehicles uh, and different products. Then all of a sudden, UPC came out, and I think that is the most popular barcode ever. Okay, because you see it on every on almost every product in the stores. Go into your kitchen, look for a UPC barcode, and I guarantee you that 99% of your stuff in your house has a barcode on it. Because when you go to the checkout, all you got to do is just run that product through the, do a, um, a reader, and it scans the store's database for the price, and voila, it's that easy. I don't remember, know if you remember back in the days, uh, I'd say like in 1980s, probably 1970s, where they had those huge steel, I mean like made of steel cash registers where you got to punch in the numbers and of course they had those um, uh, price guns and you have to put them on your products so let's say something costs 250 well if the uh, cashier accidentally typed in 230 and hit it into the um, uh, uh, to the machine of course the store is going to lose 20 cents and uh, so a lot of store owners and uh, managers were complaining about that and when the, the what's called the linear barcode those are barcodes that is straight across just a bunch of lines like the UPC when it came with the linear barcodes that made it a lot easier for the stores to calculate the uh, consumers products 2D barcode is something that came out um, and QR code was invented by a, a Chinese uh, person, or no, excuse me, Japanese, uh, through a company called Denso Wave. And um, it's really, really popular in Japan. If you go to Japan, you will see QR code everywhere on billboards, on signs. Uh, there's a search engine in Japan that has a, the largest QR code in the world planted right in the heart of downtown Tokyo. And uh, because it's very popular in Japan uh, in the uh, early 2000, Microsoft uh, came up with uh, a, a similar uh, code system using QR code. <coughs> that didn't go through very well. That didn't, that didn't really go. That didn't really fly. So um, they squashed that idea and came up with the um, high capacity color barcode which is what they're using for Microsoft Tag. The um, high capacity color barcode is has several different applications but Microsoft Tag has a set sort of criteria for how the tag will look whether it's in color 
or in black and white. And uh, you you mostly recognize it by the yellow, magenta, and uh, blue um, triangles that you see in, in this barcode sequence with a white line that goes straight across and is surrounded by a black border. QR code and uh, all the other codes are strictly blocks. And those blocks has data in it that translates into information. So um, when I come back, I'll explain the differences in these barcodes and the benefits of each barcode. And I'm going to try to keep an open mind to every one of them, even though I lean towards Microsoft Tag more. I'm going to uh, talk about how each of these codes can really be a benefit to anybody who wants to use them. And, uh, and then explain why you should pick one, stick with it, and use that only, or maybe use one or two, but then you're kind of going back and forth. So um, we'll talk about that and more, and um, I'll be right back. My name is Antonio Edward. My first uh, MobiCast.Mobi podcast. Rant You, a show for the perpetually pissed off. Because sometimes we all just get a little pissed off. Tune in to listen to rants about politics, culture, and the everyday everything. Rant you. Check it out. Rantyou.net. Hey, welcome back. Um, this is the MobyCast uh, podcast. You can access it at MobyCast.Moby on your desktop computer, laptop, notebook, even on your mobile phone. Our website is mobile compatible. And um, there's a Microsoft tag and a QR code on every single page that you can scan on your mobile phone if you want to take the information that I have on my website to go. Uh, so our website is to go as long as you have a cell phone and, you know, 3G network and stuff like that. <laughs> um, kind of getting back to barcodes, um, many uh, UPC has been one of the most popular codes, as I said in the previous um, segment. And there are different versions of UPC. There's DTIN-12. Who cares? DTIN-13, DTIN which is the using the AEAN-13 standard. Okay, great. Uh, who really cares about that? But the fact is, is that um, there are different standards for these barcodes and the barcode readers at the stores know which one to scan. Have you ever noticed that you buy some meat? You know, you have the you know butcher cut up the meat, they wrap it and they put a barcode on it. That is a slightly different standard than what's, in, what's on the prepackaged uh, products throughout the stores. And the prepackaged products uses a certain standard that you have to um, get from um, uh, I have to look it up real quick. I, I just it's just tip of my tongue, but um, you have to get the uh, barcode registered, and it's just like when you uh, get a domain name or you get a phone number from the phone company. That's probably the easiest analogy. In order to get that one number that ties to your house, you have to sign up with a phone company or cable company to get that one number. It's the same thing with UPC. You have to register for it. Same thing with domain names and a bunch of other standards that you have out there. Um, so that's why there are no two numbers that are the same, you know. And there's room for a lot of products. Um, there are, um, as far as 2D barcodes are concerned, and the UPC is linear. 2D barcodes is stacked um, bits information. Whereas linear is straight across, you know, it's just, you know, straight across numbers and letters. Uh, 2D barcodes is uh, bits information that are stacked on top of each other to create what usually is a block of information. Um, 2D barcodes is used on film. Yeah, the film, when you go to the movie theaters and you see those Dolby Digital uh, trailers, the Sony Dynamic Digital Sound, or the DTS, um, that right there is imprinted on the left side of the film and the uh, 
one part of it is Dolby Digital, the second part is Sony Dynamic Digital Sound, and then the third part is the analog sound for theaters that don't have the digital hookups, and then you have the barcode for DTS because DTS is played through a, some type of um, CD or DVD playback, which um, is a whole different story right there. Uh, QR code is, like I said, is very popular and it's also being promoted by Google. Uh, Google is using it to uh, Google local business uh, website. When you search for a business, it brings up, you know, like a little page where you can rate the business and you can talk about the business. Well, they issue out QR codes to the favorite places called Google favorite places. And those are rated by how many people visit that particular business site on Google. And then they send the business a free um, little um, uh, card to put it in their window, which has a QR code, it has like a, a map, and then it says Google favorite places. And um, it's, it's, re it's doing really good for Google. Uh, they're only uh, doing this in major cities like Los Angeles, Washington, San Francisco, but you, you don't see it everywhere yet. Um, BTAG is a proprietary uh, code that you're going to get from BTAG.com. That's B E E T A G G dot com. And then also EZ code, which is put out by ScanLife, um, which is operated by ScanBuy. Uh, EZ code is a smaller version of a, of a barcode. You have to go to their site to uh, create the code. And, uh, and you can place it on different items and you also have to download their uh, particular application onto your phone. Now there are a lot of applications for QR code in Data Matrix. There's probably t dozens and dozens of, of uh, QR code in Data Matrix um, barcode readers. To compete with other barcodes, ScanLife and BTAG can also read QR code in, that, in Data Matrix. So you can have just one, just get scan life, and you can read all three barcodes, the easy code, QR code, data matrix, or you can get BTAG and scan those three as well, um, BTAG, data matrix, and QR code. And, it's, and it works great. Um, I try both. I have both readers on my phone. I have a Windows Mobile uh, 6.5. It's an HTC Pure, and it's one of the uh, less expensive uh, Windows Mobile phones. My wife has the... Um, uh, iPhone 3GS. Uh, we're waiting for the iPhone 4 to improve their uh, antenna issues. I say by probably like by the end of the year they'll have the more improved um, iPhone 4. That's a whole different discussion. In fact, I did an article about this right before this podcast called Bareback iPhone. <laughs> it's it's uh, not it's a joke but at the same time. You know, I, I was very serious in what I was saying there, but you can read that on my blog. Um, but both the um, iPhone and the Windows Mobile uh, 6.5 application for um, ScanLife and BTAG, it was able to scan all my QR codes that I created, all my data matrix codes that I created, and all my ScanLife and BTAG on the respective applications. And it works really great. And so all I need is uh, one, or the, one or two of those applications to have on my phone to read those QR codes or uh, any other type of uh, 2D barcodes that are out there and um, I love it a lot. Now Microsoft Tag. Microsoft Tag is um, probably going to become the next standard for the United States when it comes to um, 2D barcodes here in the States most likely because Microsoft is an American company um, even though it's worldwide but it's, it's mostly um, in America. They're based in Washington, D.C. I mean, not, I mean, not Washington, D.C., but Washington, the state. And Microsoft Tag has these colorful diamonds that you can in this barcode. You can also do a black and white version, which is um, black and white diamonds. And it's really pretty to look at. In fact, it turns your print ad into something more colorful than having this huge QR code on your page. Uh, one thing I experienced with, QR, with Microsoft Tag is that no matter what I'm doing, it could be slightly dark. Okay, so if you have a sign on your storefront, right at your front door, with the Microsoft tag on it, and the lights outside aren't that bright, 
as long as it's some type of illumination, you know, like a candle light, for instance, my Microsoft Tag Reader was able to scan that barcode without any problems. I mean, it took a little bit of focusing. The camera had a hard time, but once it got somewhat in focus, it doesn't have to be all the way in focus, it was able to capture the tag and take me to whatever website that, that it was programmed to do. Now, one thing about Microsoft Tag, it is proprietary. And the tag itself, um, it just holds an ID number. And I'll talk about that in a minute um, because I like to explain the differences between QR code and Microsoft Tag. Uh, Microsoft Tag, uh, you have to register on a website called tag.microsoft.com. That's tag.microsoft.com. You have to register there first. Then once you register, then you can create your tags. Now, Microsoft at this time, and they say that once they go, um, once they release the beta version and went to the full release, that that would be the standard from that point on. Uh, they're saying that they're going to keep it free, and you can create as many tags as you want. Uh, just go crazy if you wanted to. That's great, right? But the only problem is that you have to manage all of your Microsoft tags on the Microsoft Tag website, just like ScanLife and BTag. You have to manage it on their respective sites. And that is the uh, one of the problems. Now, I would like to explain the differences between those two uh, with QR code and Microsoft Tag and how you can actually benefit from having one place where you edit it and then how you will not benefit from that, from having one place edited. There's two different reasons and why you want to decide on which code you want to use. But um, here in America, we have um, Get Married Magazine. I, I believe Women's Day started um, offering Microsoft Tag to their readers. Here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, we have this um, newspaper, this weekly periodical called the uh, AZ Weekly. And uh, he, the owner, just started um, offering Microsoft Tag for every one of their um, um, advertisers for their for their newspaper and so you have that going on um, that is essential to have because as you're flipping through your magazine you're like okay I see a beautiful ad now you know that most advertisements they don't have a lot they they really don't have a lot of information um, I don't know if you guys remember back in 1995 96 97 when you look up an ad and there was a little bit more information but then it had a phone number and that's it it was just a phone number or an address you have to call them or go to the location to get more information and there was no way for you to know where the, where the nearest store is at um, unless it's a local periodical that said okay uh, Kroger you know is located in five locations in Phoenix but that would have to be a Phoenix periodical. It cannot be like a nationwide um, magazine or something. So you will have to know what those locations are at. You will have to pull up your phone directory to find the location. And um, I have to say that even though we didn't know any better, it was harder to, um, to deal with. And, um, but we didn't know any better. The first thing I did was, I remember we got like three different uh, phone books coming to our doors every, every single year. And so I'll pull up the phone book, look up the location, call them. Do -do -do -do. This number is now disconnected. Okay, so you had the most up-to-date information as it was printed. That was the problem with that. Um, so we'll talk about that later too, but that was what we had to do back in the days. Now we got websites. And um, on all those uh, print ads you see in magazines and even on billboards and bus stop uh, signs, you always see a website address uh, printed on in front of every business. You see a website address. Like you go to Fry's Electronics, they'll have a website. They'll have a uh, a link or a website address printed on their front door. Talking about visit us at uh, visit us at Fry's.com, and that's uh, basically. I remember going through these ads saying, "Oh, these guys don't have a website, but these guys do. But they don't have a website." And then I remember telling my mother, "I said, you know, eventually." You're gonna see a website on every single ad, even the little small ads you see at the end of the magazines. You're gonna see a website address on every single ad, and eventually it was. You open up the magazine, you type in the website, and you get more information. That's basically how it's supposed to work, right? So um, 
that was um, a big thing. And uh, now you do see websites on every single print ad. Almost every business, um, almost every business has a website. I mean, you do have a few businesses that don't. Uh, but um, I eventually, I do believe that barcodes, whether it's QR code or Microsoft tag, will be on every single print ad out there. So um, I'm going to take a small break real quick and uh, kind of wet my throat a little bit. We're going to um, do the final segment. And once again, my name is Antonio Edward with Bodycast. Be right back. Welcome back to Mobicast. Uh, this is the final segment of the first show, and I decided to do it on 2D barcodes. Um, being that in Japan, QR code is very popular and um, widely used throughout the whole country. I'm sure if you went to Japan today, you'll see QR code everywhere. In London, that's right, the London tubes have uh, QR code at almost every sign, so you can scan it and see when the next train comes, which is a great idea. And I think a lot of um, uh, companies should start doing that. A lot of uh, transit agencies should start doing that. Um, but I want to talk about um, how a lot of companies are using Microsoft Tag to their advantage, and like like Get Married Magazine. Now I have a friend. Uh, his name is Stephen England. He owns a company called MobileSoft LLC, and uh, we were discussing this and saying that uh, AZ. Um, the AZ Times, um, and what's the other one? Uh, Get Married Magazine, Woman's Day. They offer these tags to their advertisers, but when you scan them, unless you have an iPhone or an Android, the websites don't come out very nice on certain phones. I have a Windows Mobile phone with Internet Explorer 6 on it. It doesn't come out pretty. Okay? The, um, whatever code they're using, you know, if they're using, um, div tags, if, if you guys are familiar with HTML, it comes out all screwed up, things are over, over the place, the graphics are too big, whereas the iPhone, um, because you're using Safari or the Android using Chrome, is able to render the websites a lot better than, um, than, um, than some phones out there like Windows Mobile, Java based phones, it won't look good at all. And so a lot of companies fail to realize that they need to have mobile websites. And that will be the discussion on my on probably on my next podcast. Mobile websites. This website here is mobile compatible, and uh, and even though it's, it's a lot of text and very little graphics, the fact is you can pull up on your mobile phone, download the, the um, podcast. You can look at all the articles. My wife has um, Serenity. She has a uh, podcast called Geek Girl Wife, and. Uh, Basically, she talks about you know being uh, the geek who's a housewife. In fact, uh, baby, you want to say something real quick? Sure. <laughs> That's her in the background, and um, she uh, holds a really nice podcast. So um, it's it's really great, and I think it will cater to a lot of um, people, specifically for uh, people who are stay at home parents or stay at home people who take care of the house while the other goes to work. And but also they're a geek too. They use iPhones, download a bunch of applications. They use the computer um, to get the information they need to run the household. And being that my wife was uh, a manager of technical support, and now being that stay a stay at home person is you know it's a challenge for her because it's a different uh, kind of life. And so that podcast is about that her venture into that. Uh, but um, her website is also um, mobile compatible as well, and we have a Microsoft tag on there. And if we ever distribute, you know, information about the podcast, if you go to like a podcast convention, and on the business cards, we'll make sure we put the uh, Microsoft tag on those business cards so that we can uh, pass it out to people. And that's the thing you have to um, think about too. If you look Microsoft business cards have those tags on it. If you know somebody from Microsoft, grab a business card from them, 
and you will see a Microsoft Microsoft tag on it. And um, there are several different ways to create these barcodes. You can create a website link, an email link. You can create a uh, callback uh, t uh, code. And what a callback does is you have the phone number embedded in the code. So when a person scans it, uh, it will call that phone number directly. And then you have the contact. So if you scan the barcode, it will save it into your contacts. Um, the information like the address, phone number, website address, all that good stuff. Same, it's like a V card stored on the code. Now, the difference between QR code and the uh, high capacity color code, otherwise known as Microsoft Tag, is that QR code, when you're looking at it, it is the website. It translates into being that site. Um, so if you look at a QR code, and if, you, if your eyes can read it, you will see www.whateveriegottago.com. Okay? If you have that QR code made, it will be that site. Here's a problem with that. If you have a QR code designed for a certain page, and you already got your print ads and all your periodicals out there, and you decide to change your website link again, or the URL changes, or you change your uh, provider and application of your site, where your, where your website uh, address, the URL changes, you will have to let those other ads go, knowing that people will probably get page not displayed when they scan it because you have a totally different website now. One thing that's good about um, having a website that you can go to to alter your codes is like VTAG and uh, QR code. You can also do the same with QR code. A lot of them have um, uh, places where you can go so that when you create these tags, you can change the URL, but it won't affect the, the QR code at all. And the VTAG does that, ScanLife does that. Um, you can alter the text as much as you want and, uh, and not worry about changing your code. So you can create a code and that code will be yours no matter how many times you change it. If you have a, like a weekly uh, promotion going, you can keep that same code for your weekly promotion instead of creating a new code every single time. So that's one good thing um, about having these sites that you have to go to to change your codes is just for that. Now a recommendation for this though is to have one static URL that never changes and then you create a redirect. If you know what I'm talking about, if you're a web designer, you know what I'm talking about you would create a redirect. So let's say you have um, www.mystore.com slash sales. Well, let's say your sales website URL changes all the time. So every single week, you have to go in there and change the redirect to go to your sales pages. Even, as, even though it changes, the sale part never changes. And that QR code won't be destroyed if you decide to use your QR code specifically for the website address itself. Now, Microsoft Tag is just like um, B Tag and ScanLife. It's that you have to log into the site, and if you change the URL, or if you have to make some changes, or if you have a contact um, tag, and your phone number changes, or your email address changes, instead of changing your barcode, keep the barcode. It that will always be the same, but you can change the Microsoft Tag contact uh, information and the barcode is unarmed. So that is a great thing. You have to really think about that when it, when it comes to uh, how you want to do your barcodes. So here's, here's my analysis about this. Google is really pushing QR code uh, only on favorite places. I believe that in order for them to be successful with that is to allow every store who wants to to uh, go to Google, claim that it is their business first, and they can do that on the Google site, and then Google will, will create a PDF file that they can print out themselves and say, we are listed on Google, and then the barcode right there, and they can put it right on their door. Microsoft Tag is, um, I believe it's going to be the U.S. standard, uh, and also European standard outside of London. Remember, London is using QR code pretty much everywhere, just like Japan is. But outside of London, I believe that Sweden, Germany, uh, and a lot of other countries in Europe are going to be using Microsoft Tag in the United States as well. 
Um, so I think you're going to see that a lot more. So which should you pick? I say go with the most popular. And Microsoft is really uh, trying to promote Microsoft Tag with the larger corporations. Not necessarily the smaller corporations, which I think that's one of their faults. But um, they're really promoted with the larger businesses. To get information about Microsoft Tag, to simply go to tag.microsoft.com. If you want to get information about ScanLife, just go to scanlife.com. If you want to get information about BTAG, just go to BTAG.com. That's B E E T A G G. That's two G's. Dot com. Um, a website that I like to go to often is uh, called MobileCommerceDaily.com. And that's all one word MobileCommerceDaily.com. And there you can get a lot of great information about, um, about what's happening in the mobile field, about mobile marketing, and stuff like that. And uh, to get information about uh, Data Matrix, there is not a whole lot about it except for Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is uh, does they do have a lot of information about uh, Data Matrix, but Data Matrix is not as popular. If you notice in on your phone bills, on your on your mailings that you get in the mails, um, you may see Data Matrix codes, but that's mainly for the machines that passes as they're sorting the mail they have that um, SIP barcode at the bottom I forgot what it's called I can't think of the top of my head but there's a those little lines at the bottom of your mail for sorting but there's also a data matrix on there as well and that helps to easily sort uh, the machines can easily sort by using that code so you're going to see a lot of data matrix used in the army or military applications on certain products you'll see data matrix on it that can be scanned and placed into a computer but uh, Microsoft Tag, I believe, is going to be the mainstream uh, tag for usage on advertising, for marketing. Um, you start to already see it. You're going to start seeing a lot of it on uh, personal websites as well. Now, for those of you who are all about open source and, and uh, you know, I have a friend who's all about um, open source, and that's why he has an Android phone, not an iPhone. And um, he uses a QR code on his website because he stands for open source. And I agree with that a lot, uh, trust me. But for some reason, I think Microsoft Tag, I'm going where, where I believe the money is going to go. And I think Microsoft Tag is, is, is going to be the next big thing. And so uh, my name is Antonio. You can comment on my site. Um, just go to mobilecast.mobi. That's mo I'm not mobile, but mobi cast.mobi um, you can go to my website add a comment if you want to email me just email me at antonio at mobicast.mobi uh, you can email me uh, if you want to about if you have any questions and uh, anytime you, if you want to say something that's private that you don't want read at all on the site or on the podcast please, please say that just say hey don't don't publish my name or don't don't read this email. If you allow me to read your email, but you don't want to mention your name, just say, hey, by the way, please don't mention my name, but you know, you can read this uh, email on the podcast. But if you don't do that, um, that'll give me, I will, I'm going to read it, you know, so I will be reading those emails if I feel it's relevant and, uh, and read it to the uh, public on my next podcast. If you make comments on my site, I'll definitely respond to you. I work Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so I'm not going to be much available on the weekends and on Monday. But during the week, I am uh, widely available and be happy to answer anybody's question. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. This is Antonio Edward at MobiCast. Take it easy.
Testing. 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 One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three.